Hello friends, in my previous video, I started a discussion on with different properties of frequency response. Okay, that is magnitude and phase response. And first one I have discussed, which is very important property, that is the digital frequency range, which is our point of interest in uh, checking different properties of the particular system or filter should be 0 to pi. Okay, so this part, first part I have discussed. And for example, I have taken the example of moving average filter. If I show you the simulation, suppose I am taking 8 point moving average filter. If I write, uh, click enter, then we are getting this kind of magnitude and phase response. And from the magnitude response, it is quite clear that this is moving average filter is a low pass filter because at uh, near to zero, the gain is very high. And as we are moving on towards pi, that is higher frequency, the and decreases okay so this particular moving average filter is nothing but a low, low pass filter now concept number two comes about symmetry okay so h of uh, e power j theta or if we take any frequency response of a system whose impulse response is h of m we write this kind of equation if we consider dtft or if we consider uh, z transformation then just e to the power j theta is replaced by z that's only the difference in between Z transformation and DTFT. Anyway, so I am discussing with respect to DTFT, same concept is applicable if you take the equation of Z transformation also. H of e power J theta is equal to summation over M equal to minus infinity to infinity H of M e to the power minus of J theta. Now, if you apply Euler's identity, you can write e to the power minus of J theta M as cos theta M minus of J sin theta M, right? So we are getting this particular equation. Now what we can do, see h of m cos theta m and summation over minus uh, infinity to infinity, this consider this particular term as c and summation over minus infinity to infinity uh, h of m sin theta m considered as d, then we can write this particular equation as c minus of j d, right? Now suppose I replace theta by minus theta, what I will get, let us observe, h of e power minus j theta can be written as summation over minus infinity to infinity h of m e power minus of j theta m where theta should be minus theta because I have taken minus uh, theta here in the left hand side. So minus minus in the power of exponential will become plus and we will get this equation summation over minus infinity to infinity h of m e to power j theta m. e power j theta m can be uh, written like this in terms of Euler's equation that is cos theta m plus j sin theta. Now again, if you consider m uh, equal to minus infinity to infinity h of m cos theta m as c and m equal to minus infinity to infinity sin theta h of m into sin theta m as d, we can write like this, that is c plus j d. So what we are getting, that is h of e power j theta, that is normal equation is giving me c minus j d and h of e power minus j theta is giving me c plus j d. Now, if you compute the magnitude response, that is mod of h of e power j theta and mod of h of e power minus j theta, you will get the same result. That is uh, mod of c minus jd and mod of c plus jd is same. That is nothing but root over of c square plus d square, which is magnitude. So what we are getting once with theta and once with minus theta, we are getting same magnitude response. So conclusion is magnitude response is even symmetry okay and if you consider the phase response so h of e power j theta is c minus jd so uh, c minus jd uh, so if you take the phase part angle of h of e power j theta you will get minus of tan inverse d by c because just recall the complex number concept when you are calculating argument uh, what we are doing c minus jd so this particular point comes in the uh, uh, fourth quadrant where this will be minus alpha sorry here I have written alpha this will be minus alpha in the first quadrant alpha in the second quadrant pi minus alpha in the third quadrant minus pi plus alpha in the fourth quadrant minus alpha where alpha is tan inverse mod of d by c right so basically in the fourth quadrant it will be minus alpha sorry for this mistake so angle of h of e power j theta is equal to minus of tan inverse d by c because this particular point c minus jd will fall in the fourth quadrant and if you compute the phase part of h of e power minus j theta c what is that c plus jd so which is coming in the first quadrant so it will be 
plus tan inverse d by c. So a angle of h of e power j theta is minus of tan inverse d by c, whereas angle of h of e power minus j theta is tan inverse d by c. So basically we can say that the phase response is following odd symmetry, okay? That is x of t is equal to minus of x of minus t concept. That is angle of h of e power j theta is equal to minus of angle of h of e power minus j theta. So phase response follows odd symmetry. So we are getting a very important conclusion from this particular derivation that is in the frequency response the uh, magnitude response follows event symmetry and the phase response follows odd symmetry. So let us directly go to the code and check uh, how we can modify to visualize the theoretical concept whatever just now I have discussed. So I have shown you the frequency response for the moving average filter which is basically a low pass filter for 0 to pi range which is basically main point of interest of the free in the frequency domain now suppose i am extending this response from minus pi to pi okay and what response we are getting let us check so suppose i am taking eight point moving average filter and if i click enter see the beauty where theory is matching with practical observe the magnitude response Previously, we are getting only from 0 to 3 this particular part because we are plotting from 0 to pi. But now we are plotting from minus pi to pi. Okay, and see that if you consider the magnitude response, see with respect to the consider the positive uh, x axis, a positive x direction and negative x direction. They are basically nothing but like here if you th th those are basically reflection of each other with respect to y axis okay you can see the left hand side of the zero and right hand side of the zero are same only just reflection okay so basically from this we are getting the idea also that magnitude response is even symmetry okay which we got from our theory discussion that is magnitude response is even symmetry right now consider the phase response Initially, we were getting phase response from 0 to 3, that is only for positive x axis because previously we are plotting from 0 to pi. But now we are plotting from minus pi to pi, and it is quite clear that this particular curve is uh, symmetric or mirror image with respect to y equal to x type curve. Okay, that is this particular phase response, it is quite clear that this is following odd symmetry from the graph itself. We can conclude, right? So, here theoretical approach we got phase response following odd symmetry and from the practical approach also we are getting phase response following odd symmetry so these two concepts again very very important and widely used in different in checking different properties that is magnitude response of any uh, 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 of any system or we can say filter follows even symmetry and phase response follows odd symmetry all right but actually our main information we can simply achieve if we plot the magnitude and phase response from 0 to pi itself because if we know the response from 0 to pi we can simply take even symmetry and we can map to 0 to uh, minus pi to 0 and we will get the magnitude response for minus pi to pi if we know the phase response for 0 to pi then simply we can apply odd symmetry concept and we can plot for minus pi to 0 also so basically our main information is hidden in the 0 to pi itself that is enough for uh, other processing but this is very important property to visualize this i have shown you this particular code okay this is all for my this video thank you for watching